You're listening to the ADHD Support Talk Radio podcast. ADHD Support Talk is sponsored by ADDclasses.com. Visit ADDclasses.com to sign up for free webinars today. Hello and welcome back to ADHD Support Talk Radio. I'm your co-host, Lynn Idris, and I'm a productivity and ADHD coach. So I help overwhelmed professionals reduce procrastination, improve time management, and get more done with less effort so that they have more time, more energy, and more money for what they love most. I'm a woman with ADD myself, so I have been where so many of my clients are and have come out the other side, so to speak. You can learn more about me and what I do and the programs and services I offer at my website. It's www.coachingadvantages.com. And when you sign up on my website or text the keyword HACK, H-A-C-K, to 444-999, I'll send you my seven foolproof productivity hacks to help you add hours of free time to your weeks by investing just a few smart minutes each day. Today I have back with me my friend and colleague, Diane O'Reilly, and I'm really excited to have Diane here with me today. We're going to talk about healing from ADHD, but I'll let Diane explain that. Diane, welcome, and tell our listeners a little bit about you. Hi, Lynn. Thank you so much for having me back. I'm, like you, an adult uh, woman with ADHD myself who, who, who wanted to go channel all of that experience um, once I found out my own diagnosis into something where I could help other people like me. I'm living just outside of uh, Toronto in Canada. I have uh, four boys who share my brain wiring, and I coach adults and parents and teens. My approach is, you know, like I like to say I coach the whole person, not just their ADHD, because I want them to experience a balanced and meaningful life that I have been able to get from um, looking at the whole picture and not just, you know, trying to fix my ADHD. So my website is all the W's, indigotreecoaching.com. That's all one word, indigotreecoaching.com. And you can uh, click on there and you can sign up for my newsletter. Uh, You can email me if there's anything about this talk you need to know. I can send you some stuff that could help explain some stuff as well. So it's great to be here then. Awesome. Great to have you back. So tell us a little bit about healing from ADHD. What what is it that you want to talk about today, what you call the secondary symptoms of ADHD? Yeah, um, well, Lynn, what I see happening often is that people go to the treatment side of ADHD. So if they're lucky, they go through their diagnosis and they get their treatment and they maybe see a doctor and they may or may not try medication or supplementation. They may read some books and alter some of their life and they may then see some big changes and, you know, feel a lot better. Um, But what I've seen is that that's the tip of the iceberg to me on what has happened to them, especially if they're an adult. They've gone a lifetime with this disorder being undiagnosed. What I call the secondary symptoms are that because they've heard 10 times more negative messaging, because they've tried over and over and failed to do things without knowing why, because they've internalized that, that there was something wrong with themselves. Um, you know, I just feel like they, they, they come to me and the treatment of ADHD is just the beginning. There needs to be the, this healing of the psyche almost, then, you know, like the self-esteem, the, the, the self-trust, the confidence, it's, it's very low. It, it's huge, right? And that's, I think, mm-hmm. the part of what we do that it isn't sexy, <laughs> it isn't glamorous, <laughs> it's not something that you hear a whole lot, but that I often tell my clients that the real struggle is the one between your ears, right? That's, and that tends mm-hmm. to be the, the toughest nut to crack for, for many of my clients, mm-hmm. getting their mm-hmm. self-perception in alignment with what they're really capable of, healing their self-esteem, healing their, you know, their perceptions and their beliefs. And I, I always say, if, if you're going to struggle, you're gonna, if you've struggled your whole life with things that, that you know you're capable of doing, you know what you mm-hmm. need to do, you even know intellectually 
how to do it, but you still don't do it consistently. You still don't follow through consistently. You still aren't consistently successful. I think it's natural that we internalize that, right? Because I think mm. that if you don't understand what's underneath of that struggle, if you don't really understand if you haven't been diagnosed with ADHD, if you really don't understand your ADHD brain and why it gets in your way, then you're going to attribute all of those struggles to things like laziness, um, you know, moral character mm. flaws type stuff. And that's, I think, where a lot mm. of that damage comes from, a lot yeah. of the stuff that needs to be healed. So, so tell us a little bit more about the secondary symptoms. How do they show up? Okay, so they show up a lot in my clients who come to me and their goals are kind of timid, you know, if that's the way they, They're almost afraid to ask for more. Maybe they want to organize or they want to stop procrastinating or they want to uh, stop feeling a certain way. And I really sometimes have to push them to say, well, what is it you really want to do? You know, and they're afraid. They're afraid like I was, you know, I was you know, similar, you know, uh, my life coach, when I first got my diagnosis, would ask me, okay, so you want to paint? Do you want to sell a painting? And I was like, oh, good God, no, you know. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You know, just, it'll be okay if I just can paint something, you know. Um, and, uh, And, you know, so that experience of going through that and coming out the other side and being able to show my paintings and even sell my paintings, has shown me that my limitations were, like you said, in my, in my mind, in between my right. ears. And so it shows up um, in what I would call gremlin thoughts. So, you know, um, like, oh, I can't do that. Or, you know, well, other people are good at that, not me. Or, you know, this kind of self-talk that just um, programmed in, it's just so responsive, you know, they... they you know, I like to say that your, your, your gremlins, those, those negative thoughts, they're not you, they're not real, but they have a really slick salesman, you know. Uh, they come disguised as you. They sound like caring. It sounds like caring when the voice inside your head says, no, you shouldn't try that because it's a bit too risky and you don't want to get hurt, right? But actually that voice is not caring because it's actually keeping you small and it's stopping you from stepping out and trying something. I love that. That's a great way to frame that. I often remind my clients that just because you think something doesn't mean it's true. Mm-hmm. And that's a, I, I love that. Those, those thoughts are based on your perception of past history, past failures, you know, whatever they come from. Then they're deeply ingrained and they feel like fact. And mm-hmm. they come from, a lot of times they come from fear, they come from <clears throat> self-doubt, they come from, you know, circumstances sometimes there are other people's statements but yeah. usually there so are not, uh, right yeah yeah for sure and you know they're not necessarily caused by adhd it, you know what i mean by that then they're caused by yep. having and living with adhd where you've developed this sort of long-term relationship with failure yeah um that can't not have an impact right so so a lot of my clients are under-promising and under-delivering. They're unwilling to commit to something. Um, you know, they, they, they really have a hard time even owning that they might have a scary dream. <laughs> of course, go on, you know, really. Just pretend, you know, when it's safe here, no one's looking, what could it be, right? right. Um, so they get stuck. They get stuck in that loop. Um, you know, one way I, to illustrate this point um, I don't know if the listeners would be familiar with this, but I'll try to describe it. There's this really great movie called Moneyball. It's a baseball movie with Brad Pitt. And uh, towards the end of the movie, and I think you can actually see this on YouTube's clip, um, the accountant guy who um, has helped Brad Pitt you know, change how baseball is played shows a clip to Brad Pitt of a second baseman who everybody in the league knows is not a second baseman, just a baseball player, but he's afraid to run to second. He only ever runs for first base. And so one day he gets up and he just whacks that ball, you know, really far. And he's like, oh, my God. And he starts running and you can see him. He does something different and he runs beyond first and he goes to second. And this is huge for him, right? He never does this. But when he gets the second, he just 
he lies down on the floor and he grabs that second base like it's a life preserver and he's in the middle of the ocean and he won't let go. And what he doesn't realize and what everybody in the audience and even the umpire and even the guy on second base from the other team is shouting at him is you just hit it out of the park, buddy. You know, what are you doing <laughs> right. on second base? <laughs> right. Not <laughs> yeah. So that, that's the kind of limit that we put on ourselves and they're not real. They're all constructed. Uh, and I believe unless you heal those, unless you actually consciously make an effort to try and address those gremlins and those negative thoughts, your, any progress you may will backslide because those are always there to, you know, come out and keep you small again, come out and keep you small again. Absolutely, absolutely. I always say if, if you don't believe you're capable, deep down eventually you'll be right. Well, yeah, yeah. It, 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 en- it ends up holding you back and you can't make changes that last, which is obviously, you know, what we want, right? We can't make lasting yeah. change unless we address that thinking piece too, unless we address the, the stuff between our ears, no amount of systems and tools and tips and tricks and ways of doing things, no amount of behavioral no. stuff, if strategy no. stuff is going to stick for the long haul. No, you'll just, you'll just stay on second base holding on to it, right? Yeah. Thinking yep. this is it. That's, you know, and all the while home, home, you know, run is on the menu and you didn't even see it. Right. So you've forgotten you know, that you're capable. Yeah, that's amazing. That's, that's yeah. a great, a great example. I think that's. I have to check it out. I don't think I've ever seen that movie, but that's a great example, right? I love it. Yeah. Love so, it. so, but you know, these these fears are pretty well entrenched, though. You know, they're kind of um, they're difficult to spot because they sound like you. You know. Um, so, for a lot of my clients, we, we we literally have to unpack it and say, okay, so what are these thoughts? And it might be that they think. Um, who do you think you are? Or why do you think anybody's going to listen to you? Or you can't do that. You know, you don't have the education for that. And so they go on, right? There was yeah. a million of them. One of the things I like to say to my clients is if these messages, if, the, if, the, if somebody knocked on your door today, your front door, and you opened it up and a stranger started telling you this stuff, what would you do? And they're like, well, you know, I'd, I'd slam the door in their face. I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd call the police, but, you know... A few choice words would be. And I'm saying, well, you know, that's happening in your mind all the time, every day, what you're doing about that. So one of the first steps, you know, to trying to separate you, yourself, from the negative, you know, messages, gremlins, saboteurs, whatever you want to call them, is to literally name them and shame them. You know, to to, to write them out, to, to see them for what they are, which is just you know, not true and, you know, um, something they can shut the door on. I love it. So, so it all starts with self-awareness, right? It all starts with paying attention. Yeah, exactly. I mean, once you say to, you know, once you identify that this thought, you know, X thought um, is not true and it's not even you, um, the next time you think that thought, you'll notice it. It stands out. It's not anymore just in the background of your own process of thinking. You know, it's not logic. It's not um, strategy. It's it's an invader. And you, it will start to stand out, you know, as exactly that. I love it. I love it. And then when, when you're noticing it and you're paying attention to it, then you can start to if you need to question it, if you need to replace it with something else, I mean, that's, that's an important part yeah. of what you have to do. It's almost like if you, if you walk across the lawn, if you walk across the field over and over and over again, you're going to burn a path that becomes easier and easier and easier to follow. And the same thing mm. happens with our thoughts, right, those neural pathways. Mm. So you've got, yeah. to, you've got to start to make a new trail. You've got to start yeah. to make a new path, one that's really – taking you where you want to go, one that's really more, and this sounds coachy, but sort of lined up with what you want out of life. Because if you, yeah. if you just leave that old tra- trail, if you just leave those old thoughts, if you just leave those gremlins go, you're always going to end up back on that same path. And it's not yeah, I mean, you know, to what you're capable of. They, they, for sure, they're not going anywhere. You know, in fact, if you leave them be, they'll just kind of move their family in and some furniture and, you know, get really comfortable and... <laughs> You know, they, they, they really are, you know, saboteurs. And I, 
you know, and it is kind of weird, you know, when I first did this myself, you know, I wrote all my gremlins out. I actually made cartoon characters for each one because they were so distinct, you know. And I named them. There was, like, Nasty Neil and there was Mumsy Mame. And, um, you know, they... It, it was easier then for me to see them as separate from me and not something I, I had to listen to or believe. But like you said, there's something else you've got to do because, you know, all these things in your brain, if it fires together, it wires together. And right. to undo that, you know, takes, you know, conscious effort, uh, you know, like, you know, developing a new mantra, um, writing all these out and then, writing the positive opposite and realizing mm-hmm. that they that is as true if not more so than the negative and using those kind of like you know um you know kind of like a weapon you know against this thought so when that thought comes up you know for me i would get the thought all the time you know who do you think you are my one of my mantras is i am enough you know i am enough so and so so a lot of that work, you know, I, I believe is 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 so necessary. If you've got treatment for ADHD and then you've um, you know, maybe got medication and supplements and you're feeling so much better and you know you're capable and you're still feeling like I'm not really moving forward what's going on, um, then uh, this is the work you have to do, right? And it's not necessarily something to do on your own. You know, I recommend you get a life coach like I did and start to consciously unpack all the things that are not serving you so that you can start to thrive, not just survive, not just tread water, not just feel better, but not get where you want to get and start to actually move towards some exciting goals that you, you, you really did not think are possible, but totally are. And start to stretch yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit. Yeah, creating yeah. a new comfort zone, creating, you know, yeah. the, the growing and the stretching that you can do when you get on top of these things. It really is what can mm-hmm. really enable you to, to perform at the level of your abilities finally. Yeah. And, you know, that's so necessary for people with ADHD. They get so scared of stepping out, you know, after all these yeah. years. And yet stepping out is exactly what we need. You know, that's the stimulant that makes us motivated. That's what gets us focused that's what gets yep. us going you know oh my god i really got to do it now because i said i would and i'm on the hook and you know otherwise you just stay small if you wait until you're ready you're never ready yeah and and when you stay small you stay unfulfilled and that's mm. not a happy place for any human being to be no absolutely yeah. well, this is good stuff diana so i love the way you frame it i love the way you explain it Hopefully it's given mm. our listeners a lot to think about. Any last mm. thoughts you have for our listeners? Um, yeah, no, I just, I just, I, you know, I encourage you all to, you know, if you can't, you know, do the coaching, just list your, some of the most negative thoughts you have right now and then bring some awareness to how often they show up and challenge them. Is this true or not? Um, visit my website and you can sign up for my uh, newsletter. You can email me. I can send you a handout I have on gremlins, on, you know, how to deal with them so that, you know, you can start this work. You really do not have to live with these limits. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Diane. And thank you all for listening. As always, I appreciate your attention um, and listening to us here at ADHD Support Talk Radio. Again, it's been great to have you here, Diane. Please check out Diane's website, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks, Lynn.